Senior Senator of uh, Samuel County. Senator, will say welcome to the media. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, ladies and gentlemen of the press, thank you for coming to have a brief moment with me. I appreciate it. And I want to thank Emmanuel from the New Dawn newspaper who has made it his duty to call me. Even though he went to my house on Sunday and we <laughs> we already tried that out, but I want to thank him for trying to reach out to me. And I also want to thank Mr. Martin Colley for his inquiries into the the claims that are made about certain credentials uh, as a Liberian citizen and as a public servant. I support the inquiries. I agree with him, and I agree with whomever has concerns about any public official regarding their credentials. Unfortunately, Mr. Colley has not done sufficient research to cover all the facts regarding the trail of institutions that I've been through before I got to this point. As you will notice, lock the door, please. As you will notice, I did not come up with any written text. Lock the door. And the reason I did not come with written text is because people have a way of scripting information in an already way on tape, but I will speak as temporarily. Where I graduated from in 1978 with my high school diploma. Now, William Arotobo High School is a member of the MCSS school system. So I'm a graduate of the MCSS school system. And as you all know, two years after that, the name of the school was changed when the coup took place. In 1984, the government of Liberia awarded me a scholarship to go to the United States to study communications. I was admitted to King State University in Ohio from the fall of 1984. I arrived much earlier, so I did one or two summer courses. But the actual the official admission period in America is always the fall semester, which is the beginning of the academic year. So I entered King State University in 1984 to pursue a degree in communications. It took me three consecutive academic years to get that degree. I graduated in 1987, December. So if you do the calculation from fall 1984 to fall 1985, one academic year, from fall 1985, so fall 1986, that's another academic year, and fall 1986 to fall 1987, which was the year I graduated, that's another academic year. So it took me three years. Of course, the summer sessions in the in the middle. And I earned my degree with distinction. I earned my bachelor's degree with distinction. Photo copying or a picture taking, whatever you want. Now, Mr. Colley claims that my bachelor degree, yes, I got it, but it's some kind of way. <laughs> some kind of way. So that's some kind of way you can determine what it is. After 1986, I moved to Cleveland, Ohio. And in Cleveland, because the spring semester was in the middle, and I did not want to sit down a whole year without going to school, waiting for fall graduation, because during the year of my graduation, I applied to many universities in Washington, D.C. So I was waiting for responses from the university. So instead of waiting and not doing anything, I decided I would get admission to John Carey University in Cleveland. In fact, it's in Cleveland Heights. It's a Jesuit institution, Cali School. I got admitted to John Carey University to do a second bachelor's degree 
in Congressional Politics and Liberation Theology. I was in that program when I swept it from Ohio to Washington, D.C. My primary, or perhaps my first preference was to go to Georgetown University. When I got to Georgetown University, Dr. Swartz, who was the dean of the college that I was going to, I approached him to try to get uh, what you call a fellowship or an assistantship. And Dr. Swartz told me that to give money to foreign students, to get them scholarships, is more expensive than to do it with people who are residents. So if I could pay the first semester tuition, then perhaps the following semester, they could see how they could get me into the assistantship at the school, at the university. I didn't have that kind of money to pay, so I went to Howard. Howard also gave me an admission letter. So I got to Howard, and I'm very grateful to the authorities of Howard at the time, Dr. Nicholas Stavo, who was the chairman of the graduate school. And what I mean, a teaching fellowship or assistantship at Howard. And I was assigned with Dr. Baba Lola Cole. I was a teaching assistant. And Dr. Cole and I, I will go to the classes with him. And I will provide tutorial whenever he's not available. I was not a professor, let me make that clear. And I was not an instructor either, I was a teaching assistant. So whenever he didn't have the time to go to class and do some undergraduate courses, you will ask me to, to assist with that. I Howard, and just to be clear, I got admitted I Howard the fall of 88, 1988. And then at Howard University, I pursued a degree in public administration and public policy. And in 1990, I graduated with a, with a Master of Arts degree. Howard University, MA in public administration. <clears throat> the support base at Howard University did not continue. And since I was a government sponsored student from Kent, I decided I would go to the embassy. So the embassy took to the education office, took responsibility to support the, the remainder of my education at Howard University. So I was there at Howard on account of the government of Liberia. And let me admit, I want to thank the government of Liberia for supporting me from my bachelor's degree up to the master's level specifically. I want to thank Dr. George Bowley, who was the Minister of Education. At the time, I was awarded that scholarship. And then later on, he went to the Marshal of Minister of State and Dr. Otello Ganga took over from him. They too supported that program for me to graduate. And then when the war struck, there was no government in Liberia. And when the graduation time came at Howard in 1990, you have to clear all your financial obligations before you be given letter to go through the graduation. <laughs> The government, there was no government, so nobody could pay the fee to which the government library was obligated. So I went to the embassy. Ambassador Eugene Stevenson. I went to her to see if the embassy could clear that government obligation for me to be able to, to clear my obligation to the school. And she said, Milton, you know, we all hear the war is raging back home. Hardly do we get paid, so the only help I can give you is I will go to the university president 
to appeal so that they can allow you to graduate by the government of Liberia, I will guarantee that we will pay the money afterwards. At the meeting between uh, Ambassador Stevenson and Dr. Jennifer, they accepted the request of the Liberia ambassador in Washington at the time with a proviso that yes, ambassador will allow him to graduate but we will withhold his diploma until our fees are paid. Because many times we allow students to graduate, we give them the diploma and the code, they don't ever come by. So we run the huge backlog of money that we owe people. So out of respect for the Liberian Embassy, we will go ahead and let him graduate, but we will not give him his diploma until he declares the fee, or until the government has declared the fee. That was the situation under which I was allowed to graduate. Now, let me say this. I have absolute confidence in the quality of my credentials. My degrees are among few of the most celebrated credentials in Liberia. And I say that because when I was graduating from King State, while some of my classmates were told in the end of the line, I was number three among thousands of American students and other foreign students. So Mr. Colley should go in greater details to investigate his claim that I am not a college graduate. I am indeed a college graduate. Secondly, there's no secret all over the world, including even Liberia. I'm not going to call names. But right now, as we speak, we are still putting money in some agency budgets to clear obligations at those agencies for sending students to foreign universities that they have not paid. Some of those people have graduated here in Liberia, but they don't have their diplomas until those agencies will clear those obligations. I'm sure some of you here are college graduates. Even from University of Liberia, if you don't clear, they're not going to give you your papers. But that does not obviate the fact that you have not graduated. But then you owe the university even when you graduate. So ladies and gentlemen, this is no long talk. I just wanted to make sure I will clarify all the issues raised by Mr. Colley. And like I said, I'm not upset with Mr. Colley. I think this is an opportunity for some of you who may have doubts to review the credentials that will be given to you. So here, you have my degree from King State University, signed by Dr. Marcus Swartz, who was president of the university. Let me open it so that you can take pictures if you want. <laughs> and here, our, when we all graduated, Jesse Johnson, Reverend Jesse Johnson was our guest speaker. So, Mr. Polly could go ahead to check further. <laughs> because maybe, who knows, I may be misrepresenting anything or something. So, let him go ahead and check further. This is it. This is the young tear gate, swelling here. This is George Lou Milton TRJ, public administration. This is the TRJ message here that I'm more humble, I'm more younger than the way I'm older now. <laughs> so, gentlemen, purposes, who are pushing Mr. Colley? thinking that it will benefit them to come after me and orchestrate lies. Oh. And here I'm presenting to you the diploma printed by Mr. Creighton Omen Duncan from Summer County. And you, the press people here, you will be condemned by your friends and colleagues if you don't follow the details of these diploma printed from World Trade Center. Claiming to have degrees that Mr. Creighton Omer Duncan does not have.
From the time he graduated from Bishop Julia High School in Swedro, he had never entered any university in the world. I'm not talking about in Liberia, in the world. And I will give this to you. And you go on the internet. For example, Mr. Duncan claims that he has a degree from University of Minnesota, Bachelor of Arts. First he said I was an associate degree, now he turned to Bachelor of Arts. Then he said he has a degree from from Australia University, master degree from Australia University. And these are all universities, Australia University is in Washington, D.C. For Australia University, all of their graduates, the pictures are on their website, year by year, as they graduate. And you go and take the year that Mr. Duncan said he graduated. Go on Australia University website. They will have your name. They will have the country you graduated from. They will have your major. Then other information relevant they will have you on the website. And your picture will be there. We've been checking for the past two years since he submit, made these submissions. Nobody, no university has been able to validate Duncan's claims of having degrees from these universities. Yes, he's going around with fake papers that he's a college graduate with master's degree. I'm giving you these. I'm not saying you, you should go and accuse him for them. Maybe I'm lying, but I'm giving you these. In one university in the United States can confirm that Duncan even ever entered there before I'm talking about graduation. Then I will have to come back to apologize to him. But he's a liar. He gave three few dollars here and there to Milan people. These are the diplomas he has presented. Take them and do your own research. I will stop at this level and I'll give you the chance to ask some questions if you want. Okay, Thank you okay. very much. Just a few questions. Five questions most. Thank you so very much. Uh, thanks for the audience, Senator. Uh, welcome again. We basically all you talk about and display some of your credentials uh, from Kingsley University. I'm more concerned about what was being raised by the who calling themselves the campaigner for academic grants code. Uh, they talk particularly about your stay in the Harvard University. Is there any link or something you can give us as reference that we can do our own follow-up on to shoot? But that's what I just did. It was not being this Of all the graduates. Thank you so very much. Yeah, it's not only my picture, everybody. Who. So, <laughs> so, so everybody uh, graduate, you can see that. All right. So just, just to be a, a follow-up to that, this has brought your character, Senator Milton T.J. High and character to public disrepute. What action are you going to take against those young people who have dragged your character to this point. It's the work of the press. My first degree was in communications. The press has the right to make inquiries about what they have doubt about. So I don't go around intimidating people using my position. And I'm glad the way I open to all of you. I hope that some of my colleagues who you may have concern about will do the same. So I don't have a problem with that. Uh, my concern is to give you the facts and to give you the testimonials, which I have done. Now, you will go back to college and say, Cody, the thing you read was on the TJ. It's not true. We saw everything. Then let him be the one to defend himself. Okay. But I'm not going to sue. I'm not going to make law with Cody. Okay, Senator so TJ, uh, just a follow-up to that question. You told us that you graduated this being the, the document from our university, 1990, on, or on the basis of... Or, or sympathy, the grant you graduation because he did not. Uh, on the basis of an understanding with the Labrain Embassy. Yeah, understanding with the Labrain so Embassy. What is the what yeah. Uh, did you mind going, going further saying the Labrain government did not give you, uh, did not pay the money for you to get your diplomat? Okay. Now let me ask this question. Which of, do you have any history of privacy in paying government bills? I don't have that kind of money. But if you help me, what is your name again? Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Yeah, if you help me, then we all start looking for the money, but I don't have money to go paying government bills. And you know, 
Say that yeah, 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 question is yeah, no, no, wait, yeah, wait, yeah. I'm waxing for New Republic. Uh, just a follow up. So, what are you doing to ensure that the Nigerian government uh, fully pay yeah. such a bill? And my, third, uh, my, sec my second is that what really prompted this uh, character assassination? Very good. I have made some attempts since I came many years ago, but I stop now. But why I attempted it, Martin Coley believes that the nomination of Mr. Darlington Candy by the president to go as managing director of the Liberia Airport Authority should not have been defended by me. Uh, as you will recall, Darlington circulated a CV in which he said he went to an institution where he earned 190 hours. And for me, I don't know of any university in the world that will require 140 hours for a bachelor's degree. So if the man presented a CV on which he has 190 hours that he has earned, my argument is then the man has earned more than what even a regular university would require for a bachelor's degree. Master Mandel Pan of Kriton Tonogi? Yes, of course. And that's why I gave you. And you will be shocked. Go and find out. The bigger trouble is ahead of you. This man is a consummate liar and an imposter. You will find out that you printed diploma that don't even exist for any university. That's where the drama team is leading me. Because if you look at the, the voting demographics, I have a larger stake in than Duncan does. Secondly, if it comes to doing the things that electorates expect from an elected officer, I'm doing very well to the satisfaction of the majority of the electorates in Sino because he made a lot of misrepresentation to the president and to all of you that he can beat me in Sino. 